咁多位大家好，我咧 Sir 嗱，咁又賣少少廣告先啦。二月嘅 Funnel 初選呢，又已經開始咗啦。咁下面啊有返五個選項啦。咁啊截止日期呢，就係今個月月尾三十一號啊，時間就係晚上嘅十一點五十九分。咁大家踴躍投票啦噃。好，第四條咧就有關於實驗設計嘅題目嚟嘅。咁當年咧其實得二十三個 percent 嘅同學答得啱嘅啫。咁啊題目就俾我哋啦，四個咧特定實驗嘅設計。佢就問我哋啦，下面邊一個咧就並唔係呢個實驗設計嘅目的啊？咁其實想考我哋咧，都係有關於對照實驗嘅概念。咁對照實驗就同我哋測試嘅實驗咧係一模一樣嘅，除咗啦個 I V 係唔同之外。咁當然我哋陣間又要諗下邊個係我哋嘅 I V 啦。第二樣咧就有關於公平測試，點樣先能夠獲得一個有效嘅結論呢？咁其實啦，成個實驗 P、Q、R、S 同埋嗰個三十七度嘅 water bath 啦，個實驗嘅每一個 set up 咧都係有意思嘅。咁啊，所以啦，一定要知道翻啦 ，setting up different tubes 係為咗去滿足唔同嘅目的嘅啫。咁所以每一支 tube 咧都有一個特定嘅角色嘅。咁我走雞噶啦，成個實驗嘅目的咧就係為咗去調查一下呢個澱粉酶嘅作用係啲咩嘢啦。咁所以成個 tube out 咧就正正係我哋嘅 experimental set up， 佢有呢個 starch solution 咧，亦都有呢個 m s i x。咁你當然啦，三十七度咧就係一個 CV 嚟嘅。好，咁先睇 option A 啦 ，tube P。咁啊 tube P 咧其實正正就係我哋嘅對照實驗。咁啊因為啦佢有澱粉嘅 solution， 但係啦佢就冇咗個 m s i x 嘅。咁題目啱啱先講完啦，我哋就係想知道呢個 m s i x 嘅用處啊嘛，有呢個澱粉嘅溶液嘅。咁大家都係三十七度，係因為佢係 CV 啦。咁所以啦。一個就有反應，一個冇反應。咩反應啊？係個 starch 有冇消失到？咁啊 t o b e out 呢，我哋做完嘅 out in test 係會發現啦，做晒成個實驗係 negative 嘅，係會冇咗個 starch 嘅。咁但係 t o b e P 呢 s t a r c h 仍然響説。咁所以啦，佢就能夠證明得到呢，之所以啲澱粉會消失，係因為 t o b e out 入面係有呢個 m s i x 嘅作用。就唔係因為啲 starch 咧無釐拉位自己 break down 咗自己，咁你諗下啦，將阿 P 同阿 R 去比較，就係、是、相差咗個 M 曬啫嘛。跟住到頭來，我哋發現呢，喺 R 嗰樹呢，真係會冇咗啲 starch 㗎喎、哦。咁咁啊，證明咗呢，同個 M 三 X 呢係有啲拉間嘅。咁 A 佢就講啦 ，show the result of our DNA test if starch is present。正正就係我哋想講嘅啦，就睇下究竟邊一支仍然有澱粉嘅存在咯。例如啦，好似 P 咁仍然有澱粉存在嘅，咁即係話個 M 曬 X 作怪啦。所以 A 呢係正確嘅。好，跟住啦就去到 Q 啦，咁啊就淨係得 M 曬 X solution 嘅啫。咁當然仍然係同 R 做比較啦。R 呢仍然係我哋嘅測試實驗，而 Tube Q 呢仍然係我哋嘅對照實驗，正正就係冇咗個澱粉嘅溶液響樹。所以啦，兩者呢最大嘅分別就係喺 R 嗰樹呢，我哋係會測試到有還原糖嘅出現嘅。咁啊，因為啦有個 M 曬呢，就將個 starch 拆解咗，到頭來呢就會出現呢個還原糖嘅。咁但係啦喺 Q 嗰樹呢，由於佢係冇呢個酶啊嘛，所以呢，佢係冇還原糖嘅。所以 Q 呢，就想幫我哋確認得到呢。任何嘅還原糖喺 tube out 出現呢，都係因為呢有呢個 m s i x 嘅出現，所以 option B 呢，就 set up 個 tube Q 就係為咗去 show 得到 m s i x alone 呢，係唔能夠俾得出一個 b e n e d i c t e s t 嘅 positive result， 就即係話啦，淨係得 x 呢，唔會無啦啦有還原糖㗎嘛，一定要有啲澱粉質響樹嘅，咁所以呢 b 呢，都係符合到呢個目標嘅。好，跟住咧就到 tube S 啦。tube S 呢，佢就係有呢個澱粉嘅溶液啦，同埋一個煲咗嘅酶嘅。同返 R 比較嘅話呢 t u b e S 呢，正正就係一個對照實驗啦。大家呢都係有呢個 starch solution， 大家都有個 M 曬。不過呢 t u b e S 嘅酶呢就俾人煲過嘅。咁到頭來又睇下結果啦。S 嗰樹呢，個 starch 呢仍然呢係響樹嘅，佢冇俾人 break down 到。同一情況底下呢 r e d u c i n g sugar 呢。亦都係冇出現過嘅，所以比較返 t u b e R 同 t u b e S 呢，就係想話俾我哋聽，消化澱粉呢係需要嗰個 m s i x 存在嘅。咁而家題目佢就話嘛 ，setting up t u b e S 呢係為咗話俾我哋聽呢 m s i x 呢，當我哋煲佢嘅時候呢，佢會變成嗱呢句説話呢，本身自己係啱嘅。但係喺個實驗入面呢，係睇唔出嘅。我哋淨係知道佢冇咗反應，但係究竟佢係咪變咗性呢？我唔知道，定係純粹佢淨係變得不活躍呢？咁我哋喺個實驗係不得而知嘅。所以有關於 m s i x 呢，喺煲過之後佢會變性而失去咗個催化能力呢，呢、這個 concept 係我哋自己學返嚟嘅啫，就唔係喺個實驗嗰度呢去呈現到俾我哋睇。
所以即使 set 咗 set up as 呢，都係唔能夠話俾我哋聽呢，原來煲嗰啲煤呢，佢係會變性嘅。好，跟住去到最後啦，就係、是、呢個三十七度嘅 water bath 啦。咁啊，就為咗提供一個不變嘅温度啦，俾啲反應呢去發生嘅。咁其實佢就係我哋嘅 CV 啦。咁正正啦，亦都係為咗去模仿呢我哋人體嘅温度啊。咁所以呢，佢都係符合到呢我哋實驗嘅目標嘅。咁唯獨呢，就真係 C 呢，就唔符合啦。Question four is about the purpose of experimental design. And there are only 23% of students get it correct. And the question is asking which of the following is not the purpose of the experimental setup. So for the whole setup, we need to realize that the importance of setting up different tubes or even the 37 degrees Celsius water bath in the experiment is to fulfill the aim of the experiment. So that's why each tube they play different roles, and we need to recall the aim of the investigation. We would like to investigate the action of a starch digesting enzyme X. So for the whole question, actually, is checking two concepts. The first concept is the control setup. For the control setup, is identical to the experimental setup, except the factor under investigation is absent. I have just tell you that the aim of the investigation is the action of the starch digesting enzyme. And the second concept is about the fair test for the valid conclusion. So for the P, Q, S, and the water bath, we need to take a look at the design, and then can they serve the particular purpose? And before we talk about the options, I need to remind that the tube out is the experimental setup. It contains the starch solution and the enzyme X. So that's the setup for us to investigate the action of the starch digesting enzyme. And let's take a look at the options. Setting up tube P, as I mentioned, that tube R is the experimental setup, and tube P actually is the control setup. Tube R contains enzyme X and starch solution, but tube P only contains the starch solution. So at the end of the experiment, we can see that tube R there is no starch at all. It will show a negative result of the Aldin test. But for the tube P, there should be still starch here. So if we compare tube P and tube R, we can prove that. Any disappearance in starch in tube R was due to the action of enzyme X, but not simultaneous breakdown of the starch. So someone may challenge you that the starch is not broken down by the enzyme X; it's just simultaneously broken down itself. So that's why I set up tube P to show you that for tube P there is no enzyme X and starch still here. And for tube R there is the enzyme X. At the end, the starch disappears. So there must be something strange. For the enzyme X, for option A, it's mentioned that setting up tube P is a way to show the result of Aldin test if starch is present. It is correct. And for option B, tube Q, so we can see that tube Q only contains the enzyme X solution, but for tube R, it's containing starch solution and the enzyme X. So if we compare tube Q and tube R, tube R is the experimental setup, and tube Q will be the control setup because the starch solution is missing. So at the end of the experiment, we can find that there are reducing sugar in the tube R. And there is no reducing sugar in tube Q. So we can prove that by comparing tube Q and tube R result. Any reducing sugar produced in tube R was due to the action of enzyme X on the starch solution, but not simultaneously production. Maybe someone challenged you that the enzyme X can synthesize reducing sugar from water. So let's take a look at option B. Setting up tube Q is to show that enzyme X alone cannot give positive result in Benedict test. So we can really see that if there is only enzyme X in the tube, there is no reducing sugar at all at the end of the experiment. So setting up tube Q can really fulfill the purpose of the experiment design. So that's why option B is also correct. And for option C, setting up tube S. Tube S is containing starch solution and boil enzyme, and the tube R is containing the starch solution and enzyme X. Tube R is experimental setup, and for tube S, it is the control setup. It contains the starch solution. However, the enzyme is boiled. So we compare the results between tube S and tube R. So at the end of the experiment, there is still starch. Present in the tube S, and also there is no reducing sugar produced in tube S, and in tube R because there is enzyme X, so that's why starch will be broken down into reducing sugar. 
So by comparing tube S and R, we can prove that the digestion of starch in tube R was due to the action of enzyme X. And option C is about setting up tube S is the way to show the enzyme X is denatured after boiling. This statement is true itself, but it cannot be drawn as a conclusion from the experiment. We just know that if we boil the enzyme, there is no such reaction for the breakdown of starch and no production of the reducing sugar. So that's why the concept of enzyme X is denatured after boiling and lose the catalytic function is just based on the knowledge from the book instead of the investigation purpose. So that's why setting up tube S cannot fulfill the purpose to show that MSI is denatured after boiling. So that's why the answer is C. And for option D, setting up the 37 degrees Celsius water bath. So actually, it can provide a constant temperature for the reactions to take place. So the temperature is the controlled variable. And actually, it can really simulate the temperature of the human body. So it can really fulfill the purpose of the experimental setup. So that's why the answer is C.